Hello community! Today a little bit more challenging topic. We have a look at a phase transition between the positional learning and the semantic learning in a mathematical solvable model of the dot product attention in a transformer layer, which is amazing. So let's have a look here. We have the Eidgenössische uh, Technische Hochschule von Lausanne in Switzerland. And they investigate here how a dot product attention layers learns here either an attention matrix or a semantic attention matrix. And they study here for the nonlinear self attention layer with the trainable tight and low rank querying key matrices in the asymptotic limit of a high dimensional data and some quite large number of training examples they provide a closed form characterization of the global minimum of the non-convex empirical loss landscape. You know the loss landscape, whenever we fine tune, we have here a loss function and we train here this loss function for an extremal point. Now, they found here something beautiful. Have a look at this. You can read the study and it's gorgeous. However, for a very simple task, and the task is the histogram task. This means we have a sequence to sequence function where the input sequence x here, so x1, x2, x3, is for example an alphabet, a, b, c, d. And then you have a sequence y, where each token y is the number of occurrences of a token x. So, for example, let's have a look at this sequence here, A, B, B, C, A, B. So we have two A's, we have three B's, we have one C. So this sequence goes now into another sequence here, two, three, three, one, two, three. A very simple histogram task could not be an easier real world example. But you know what, when they did this and they had a look here at exactly the lost surface, you know what they found? They found here that they have two global minima. And given the increase in the complexity here now of the sample complexity, the system itself moves from at first a positional attention matrix minimum to a semantic minimum of the complete system. So in theoretical physics, you know when we have this, this means we have a phase transition of our complete system. Now, you might say, such an easy task like a histogram task, and nobody discovered that there are two solutions here, two global minima. Yes, absolutely. And this is the beauty here in this publication. And maybe you have overlooked this publication because you know what? It is not really the simplest form because they consider now the learning here and they consider how does this dot product layer in the transformer architecture learn and they found a mathematical formulation and they found here a closed form characterization here of the training when they analyzed here the learning problem in a high dimensional limit and if you have here a look at the system equation they found this beautiful finite dimensional self-consistent equation. And now with this equation, when they analyze this, they found that they have a phase transition in the system. To my knowledge, nobody ever did this before. Now, it is not really a trivial documentation if you want to have a look at this. So maybe you allow me to give you some insights from my side, but I have to read here in detail this publication at the next weekend. And this is now just to give you an introduction to the topic if you are interested to read this particular archive preprint from the team in Switzerland. So if we have further insight, how does large language model learn? Now looking here, particular at the attention mechanism, you know, this would be really an improvement because with this development of a phase transition from a positional attention, which concerns you the order or the location of words in a sentence or in a text, to a semantic attention, 
which focuses here on the meaning and the relationship, the semantic relationship between those words, this is important. So, just to be sure, definition of positional attention and semantic attention with an example. Now, if we understand the dynamics of this phase transition, this is key to unlock some more efficient training mechanisms for our large language models, but also for our vision language model and our vision language action models, our robotic system that are built on the attention mechanism. So by pinpointing here those conditions under which these transitions occur, now we could theoretically tailor here some specific training data sets and some new methods to shift here to a semantic attention phase. And therefore, we can reduce the computational resources and the time required to train our models. Think about this. That this knowledge of a phase transition enables here the development of transformer models that are not only faster to train, but are also more adept at handling here a wider array of more complex linguistic tasks with a greater accuracy and a better agility. So the importance of understanding this phase transition is really, really significant. So we can enhance our model understanding to adopt the semantic attention more efficiently. We can improve our model performance to more complex NLP tasks. And we have a better data and training efficiency with a higher quality and a new type of data for this transition. However, if we would be limited to the pure positional phase of the attention mechanism, what would this mean? What are the consequences? This is crucial for understanding here the structural aspects of our language, but it limits here the understanding of the semantics. So this system may struggle to fully grasp the context of the text, of more complex text, of more complex chain of thought argumentation, for example. If we are still in the positional phase, and if the system has not moved over to this phase transition, we might have difficulties challenging to resolve here more complex semantic tasks. We have a lack of coherence, a lack of depth, and a lack of relevance here. We have syntactically correct solution, but this solution failed to, ca to capture the essence, the cultural nuances, the idiomatic expression here of the language. The whole semantic information is not really there. So this means we have also a reduced adaptability across the task. So it might perform good or well on tasks that are heavily relying on syntactic structure, such as classification tasks. So this might be great if you stay here before the phase transition. But if you have tasks that require a deep understanding of the content, such as question answering or summarization, then we do not have the performance of the system. And especially if you work cross domains, this is interesting how the phase transition moves across different knowledge domains. And you might be now looking at the data, at the training data, at the structure, at the format of the training data, overly dependent on the specific format or the specific structure of our input data. Because we have not moved on our system from a positional to a semantic phase. So, challenges with unstructured text, the processing and the interpretation of this unstructured or free-form text is not there yet. It is less effective. This also means here, the data and the resource intensity, we have an over-reliance on the system and the positional attention, so we need a more specifically structured data set. Do you remember when we fine-tune models and we have a, a, a rigid structure of our data set? They have to be in a certain way and not one millimeter different. Maybe those systems are here before the phase transition. And it would be beautiful to have a hybrid approach to unlock both capabilities and to have those systems. So phase transition are a beautiful thing. And now here, so what are the benefits if we would understand it better? This is the first publication I know in this topic. 
we could optimize here the training process and we could have a better data presentation. So this means we would have other data structure and data content. And this would improve the model performance across a wider range of tasks. We can have models that are pinpointed to very specific needs and we can have models that adapt their learning strategy based on the task at hand. Think about how complex models learn and adapt if we understand that they have to go through a phase transition with their need specific data format and data structures. And we can train those models in different ways, making models more interpretable, more transparent to the humans. Of course, we reduce computational resources. It is cheaper, it is faster, less data, less training time quality of a quantity of our training data set. This also means you now for particular for science, for cross-disciplinary domains, this, this is something fascinating. But you know, we can also build new model architectures where we trigger to model to be before or after a phase transition with some enhanced learning capabilities. I think this is absolutely beautiful to understand that there is a phase transition and hey, Congratulations to the team here in Switzerland for the first to find out that there is a phase transition, a mathematical solvable model of a simple dot product attention layer in the transform architecture. And you know what? This might answer why, for example, a Mamba architecture is not able for in-context learning. But more about this in a later video.